This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the awesomest of hours on the internet here. It is the awesome cast. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk tech and geek geeky with you, with me on the couch. It is John Chichilla, chillatech.net at Chilla on the Twitters. The gadget extraordinaire at Big Bank National uh, Reserve. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I'd like to be a big bank national reserve. I'd, I'd be like Scrooge McDuck's in the ivory tower coins. of big bad. You know what? I, I, I see that building and I, I wonder if there's a giant vault that you can swim in. Uh, <laughs> although, you know, actually it's been fascinating. So I was down in market square with uh, Katie with some stuff um, that I'm actually going to show you in a little bit here for our awesome thing of the week. And I, I looked up and I was like, Hey, remember that park that Chilla showed us on, on, on awesome cast, the out, uh, the indoor outdoor park. That's like 40 floors up or whatever. There it is up there. You know, where oh, we're could you gonna... see it from where you were standing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. From like, from like market square. Yeah. Cause where... that face is into market. Yeah. Square. Yeah. I was like driving in the town and I started noticing <laughs> it now. Like now, like, you know, the, the thing, you, the, the fog of war that's just out there until you're like, Oh, that's that thing, you know, mm-hmm. or, or maybe you, you visited a, building and actually went up in and you're like oh that's you know now now like i didn't even know that building you know how many clients i visited and i didn't know that was a building until i went up into it and now i can't not see it in the skyline you know it's 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 a curious thing that happened there but we're going to begin in the technology and some other curious objects uh that fit in your pocket uh but this is your awesome cast you can check us out at awesomecast.net um you can subscribe to the show you can subscribe to us on youtube stitcher spreaker iheart itunes iheart radio google play uh podcasting you can join us here live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, around between 6 30 we definitely get going by 7 p.m eastern time over here and also we've been playing a little bit follow us on facebook we've been putting the live stream on there as well for the show let's see if you guys dig it see you guys pop in i know uh we've been getting a few comments over on the wrestling mayhem show when we've been doing that unfortunately there's only an hour and a half uh limitation apparently still on doing facebook live even when we're doing it through wirecast so we're not doing that so much anymore but in the meantime uh you can uh, uh also check us out also live streaming um or post live streaming uh with our friends riversedgepgh.com every thursday morning 8 a.m after funny money and check out a few other friends a couple other sort of charm uh, media productions on there as well including fishing without bait on sunday mornings uh great stuff great local music riversedgepgh.com and shout outs to our friends patreon.com slash awesome cast if you want to support the show like our good friends at this will see business development up there in cranberry pa and Michael Fedor of the Mike Fedor Show on Twitter. Thank you so much, our executive producers. Uh, and uh, you don't have to give a couple bucks like they do. If, if you dig it, we definitely appreciate it. But just uh, uh, rate the show wherever you are listening to it. iTunes is a big help. Like the show on Facebook. Uh, thumb it up and on and comment with us on YouTube.com uh, slash an awesome cat an awesome cast and uh and just uh, uh share it with your friends tell the people about it tweet about it and uh and, 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 and engage with us guys so let's get into the awesome things of the week chilla can i go first oh yes you can because <laughs> i have so many questions he has so many questions chilla of course uh, uh, chilla has been showing off his his is is your device released yet are you still, i don't think so so he will have the samsung Gear 360. Gear 360. You've been playing with that, and uh, and of course, you know, see, not a lot of people have that out. You even had it at your picnic. Mm-hmm. Did you? How did how did this stuff come out for your picnic? This, this, and I uploaded. Did you get the shares? Oh, I did. Uh, I think I responded to you that. So you, uh, so we've been trying to figure out. I, I one of the reasons so I'm looking at 360 videos to edit. Um, unfortunately, I think I need the Samsung software, and of course, that's not happening on Windows because it nothing would read it. Um, not even not even YouTube would would like convert it to bad video or anything like that it just re- it's, it got rejected on everything i tried so but the picture worked so the picture works and that's where so that and that's where i was actually going to talk to you the there's software for the device 
mm -hmm. the mobile phone, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to get that now today because you'll have this. Yeah, yeah, um, we're, we're doing kind of a exchange but the here. but the the um when you post the picture from their app to Facebook, yeah, it comes up as just like the picture you see with the weird. Okay. Okay. I, I have I have a little bit of investigation on that with this. So what Ripple. I have here, so what I have here is um, this is the first one that really kind of got our interest of, hey, maybe we should get our hands on one of these things. Uh, this is the Rico Theta S. I've been listening to Alex Lindsay on Mac Break talk about this for months at this point. And of course, he's got like a $60,000 version of something like this. This is about a $350 device that you can get on amazon.com today bnh wherever that's that's pretty much i think that's the standard retail price for it there is also about a 200 dollars version called the uh rico theta m15 so if you don't want to dive in as deeply but do want to play with 360 um, um pictures and video that's an option as well but we went a little higher end because uh, we're, we're looking for options and then actually we're looking to do some professional things and this is kind of our first step in that direction uh it's uh for those on audio it's um Geez, how do I describe this thing? It's an obelisk looking thing with uh, uh, two lenses, one on each side. They're very fish eyed. Um, I'm afraid to lay it down anywhere. Thankfully, it comes with a nice little sleeve that I can stick it in. Um, on the bottom, it does have a mount so I can stick it on a tripod. Um, I've actually been walking around. I, so, so like somebody told me about Woot probably on the show, and, and, and I, I followed Woot for about a month. And somewhere in there, I got this. Hold on. I realize I have it like right here. I got a monopod. And I figured that would be helpful for this. Uh, so uh, so this nice little monopod extends out and I can hold it out like over the tracks, you know, at the train station or something or at least like, you know, away from my body so that it, I'm not pressing the button and you see my hand and everything in the shot in the bottom of it. So that that's been helpful as well. Um, USB HDMI out. I have not played with the HDMI out part of it, but that uh, this is one that... Um, there are supposedly streaming options. Again, haven't tested that just yet. Uh, supposedly Wirecast that we use here for the show. I can plug this into Wirecast and stream the output. Okay. I don't know what you do on the other end <laughs> as far <laughs> as viewing it. I don't know how that part works yet. I will be investigating it, and, I, and, and, and I have some parties interested in what is that. Like, like definitely I have some parties that are interested in what do you do with that video? What, do, what can we do to stream it? Something like that. Um... Other than that, it's pretty simple. You turn it on. There's a Wi-Fi connection. That's how it connects to the app on your iPhone. And from the iPhone, you can take pictures. You can take video. You can download everything onto your phone. And it stays right into the camera roll. Does it do that for the Samsung as well? Like, is it just it saves kind of... locally on the device? So as if, like, in your there's photos? A micro, there's a micro SD card. And then you can copy it. You can choose to save it down to the device. And it will save it into photos. Right on the and that's the equivalent. One so here's here's the thing right off the bat you have an sd card in yours yes this has eight gigabytes okay no, which eight gigabytes internal seems, seems like a lot of space based on what i've used yes but but it does when you want to do video and you look at it and, and and i don't have to see i'm not even sure how to clear this out so i don't know how much is on the device um but it has like like 45 minutes left on it if you At plug it point? into a computer, does it act as a drive and you can manage the files? I don't know. No, not yet. Not yet that I can tell. I think I have to bring it in. I, if I plug it in, it it shows it in like image capture and in Final Cut import. But honestly, I haven't seen like image capture wouldn't let me delete stuff off of it. So I'm I'm okay. I, I'm sure I'm missing something. I'm gonna read the read the manual. Uh, read the effing manual and, and figure that part out. Uh, but but again, just for a few days and not really reading much and just taking it and playing with it and, and doing that. Um, so I played with the app and first thing I noticed, you may have noticed a couple days ago, um, I posted some 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 images and videos from this. Uh, it, it, it automatically wants you to post to like Rico Theta's site. Right. And directly. I noticed that because it, it showed when you posted to Facebook the Facebook post showed right. like Rico 360 or theta360.com or right. whatever it was. Which is okay, that's fine, but mm -hmm. I want things to be a little more native, especially when we're talking about um especially especially when we're talking about like like I want things to pop on Facebook. And if it's just gonna be a link to something else, that's worthless to me as far as I'm concerned. Um so and and here, let me let me see if I can pull up an example, because I think that's what I shared to the awesome cast group, right? 
Um, it's the one. It looked like you guys were sitting outside of the back of. Yeah, I, the first few pictures I took because I, I got it like ten minutes. Like it came in ten minutes before we went off to do some stuff. So I was like getting out of the car and just taking pictures, you know, in the in the parking lot eating ice cream and taking pictures and video, and and that was about it. Um, so here it is loading on uh, Rico Theta's site. Now this is actually an image up in Brookline. It looks like uh, up on the main road. And again, oh, if it loads on this old browser, we'll see what happens. Oh, it's going to get mad. It's going to get mad at these old ones. I need to update some of these computers around here, apparently. Um, but anyways, we figured things out. And um, um, if you... So it downloads it to the camera roll. And where I, if you open it on the phone in mm -hmm. the Photos app, it doesn't really notice what it is. I've noticed when it uploads to Google Photos... When it upload to Google Photos, um, um, sorry, I'm getting messages. Uh, it uh, the pictures show up as 360. So that's the okay. Vid the, so vid I, the videos don't. I have the same outcome from the from the Gear 360. Right. Uh, Facebook. If you go through the Facebook app on iOS, you are good to go, and it is natively there. Although, now, if you plug it in and grab the photo on your computer, what does it look like? Um, <laughs> like <laughs> but is it all it weird? Is. is it all it's weird all, on it's the all bottoms weird. and tops? It includes a Rico Theta app, and then um, and then you can put it in the app, and it kind of adds the me the meta um, the metadata, and then I can upload it to YouTube. I can upload it to Facebook, and it knows what to do. Uh, basically, at, at a certain point, um, the the camera is putting the metadata in. And here's a here's an image. If you guys are on video, uh, this is down at Gateway Center, and uh, down by the fountain. So uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, you know, just a little bit of the imagery we've been doing. I should have a few more here as well. I just take, just take a little bit to load up. Um, but uh, generally, image quality is fantastic. I think from the looks of it, probably pretty comparable to what you were doing on um, on your uh, uh, Samsung. Mm -hmm. video quality and again when i'm playing it back it's usually on the phone and i do realize that it's uh it's it's you know remote it's streaming it's not full hd um or whatever it is um and, and again i don't have high expectations for the video on this thing but we'll be able to take it we'll be able to try some stuff with it in the meantime and 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 figure out you know kind of what the capabilities are and again, kind of looking to see if I do have a video hanging out here. I think here's one of the fountain, if I have this correct. So, um, but again, both of those are, are, are instantly viewable, able to put that up, and, uh, and, and you're good to go, at least on, on Facebook and uh, even YouTube to a certain extent. So, and, and, and also point out, if you put it on YouTube, and again, here's the other problem. When you're streaming a video, like this is kind of a lower end computer that I'm using over here. It is choking on this because think about how high of a resolution this has to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you also you have to think when you're streaming a video, you're not just streaming this section that you're looking at. You're streaming the entire, entire all you're, the way around. You're, you're, you're streaming about six times the video you're looking at in order to see everything up and down too. That's a lot of pixels for it to, for it to go. And and again, a computer like this, it's not and you know, not going to handle something like this. This is a um this is probably a Core 2 Duo, so it's a little older, right? Uh running Windows XP and 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 it's definitely choking on it. But it runs fine for the most part if your bandwidth is good on the iPhone, it runs fine if you're on a newer like MacBook or something like that. Um but again, this was really wasn't made for this. So, this is the same problem we had back when <laughs> <laughs> when MacBreak did their HD 1080 version of the show and nobody had the bandwidth to watch it, basically, mm -hmm. like that's where we're at with these kinds of videos. Um, so this is, again, the ground floor. You know, again, you, we could do higher end versions of these, but it's going to be harder for people to watch them. Right. The, even the apps that I have for Google Cardboard, like the really good ones like um, um, New York Times VR. You have to download it first. Like most of the stuff, you have to pre-download. They were they were doing some streaming versions, um, and I tried them a couple of times. And I'm on I'm here on FiOS and have plenty of bandwidth to do all these shows and everything with 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 very little problem. Um, 
and and I still had issues doing just cardboard, not high end VR Oculus kind of stuff, just cardboard level uh, VR. And and uh, I think that's I think that's that's just a hurdle that we're going to have to. It'll work itself out over time, right? So so did you say you were able to take a still photo and post it to Facebook and have it be correct? Yeah, I can't. I, there's no way for me to do that. Really? With and what I, you gave me the idea that maybe if I went out to my Google Drive, grabbed the photo off of Google Drive, and then uploaded it through the Facebook app, mm -hmm. it would do something. I'm thinking that they're they're not putting the appropriate metadata to let Facebook know. So I found a page um, when I was investigating this stuff. When since we got the camera, I, I found a page on Facebook that is all about 360 video. And there's a list of cameras that, say, that they say that add the metadata to the photos initially. So I think what's happening when you have something like Samsung, um, they're like, well, we want you to put in the Samsung stuff and the Samsung but service and use the Samsung headset and everything, right? But their, but their software allows you to post to Facebook. But if their software posts to Facebook, does that work? It doesn't work. Now, now I'm guessing it's because it's still... Yeah, so you're also pre-release. Yeah. You're, so maybe they just haven't finished that yet. Uh, maybe they have. There's some kind of approval they need from Facebook itself before it gets to something. And like Facebook that. only added the 360 photos, I think, like a week ago. So it could be something that's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried the video because most of the video I have is ginormous. Yeah, and that, and that's and that's a big problem. But but this I also wonder. It seems like it's from stuff I'm seeing online and, and other people's feeds and whatnot. It, it's definitely catching on. Mm -hmm. So I wonder how long is it before all the other major social media allows for some kind of direct post? I think it's eventual. I mean, um, you know, I can't point it on Twitter yet. Mm hmm. Yet Twitter is so forward thinking that you I have a button like Periscope is streaming on Twitter. You have a button that goes straight to Periscope when you pull up media on mm -hmm. Twitter now. I can't. Everybody's thinking about this. It, 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 they have to be, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, maybe Apple will, in, you know, build something in to iCloud. I, I you know, I, I don't know, because would they in iCloud? Because. <sighs> They don't have their own 360 video or anything like that yet. Well, and yet, but in the latest update for Facebook, can't you? I think if you have a panorama mm -hmm. and you actually take a panorama with your phone and move in a circle, oh, it'll actually now it's not going to stitch, so you can't really look up. Right, but the side to side, it, it, it's something side that to moves. side. I think. Facebook will take that and then turn it into. You got me curious now, so I'm going to take a quick pano and uh, and and toss it on Facebook and see if that works. That that was supposed to be something Facebook was work was working on was all this adaptation of 360, uh, because obviously they own Oculus, so it's definitely in their best that's, interest. That's the other thing too. Like, well, and it, and I, I I imagine there's a certain point where I'm going to put on an Oculus, go to a Facebook app, and be like, do you want to see 360 videos and photos? And here's just like all the stuff your friends and other people have posted in 360. Uh, so I'm going to, oh, oh, so this is interesting. Um, when you, so how do you know, right? And sometimes it doesn't show until I've selected the, the picture. But right off the bat, I just took a quick panorama and there's a little globe in the corner when I'm in the photos upload screen on Facebook for iOS. That means it's the 360 movement kind of thing so if uh, it's uploading right now so in a moment you'll see on my personal facebook page it's a little bit of a panorama of just the studio here you see some of this stuff stacked over in the corner or something like that and i'll pull it up here on the main page as well and and again it's going to be and it's movable it's movable just like you know those those uh, rico theta things so right off the bat you can make something interesting again not a full 360 but interest, interesting enough, and again, waiting for it to load on the slow computer, interesting enough that uh, that that it, it'll, it'll pop, right? You get that little icon that says, you know, it says, hey, this is turnable and, and stuff, and, and you're you're pretty good to go. So uh, that's, that's pretty nice. Nice tip there. So if you're not getting a Rico Theta, that's something you can do in the meantime.
Sorry, I lost my mouse. I don't know which screen it's on. So there it is. Um, uh, other than that, uh, we're going to play with it a bit more. I Like I said, I have some projects happening uh, actually in the next couple of days. Um, people are already uh, are giving me reasons to use this thing. Uh, so uh, we'll have a lot of results, a lot of play with this thing in the near future. Um, and uh, this is going to be an ongoing thing, I think, an ongoing discussion in general. Um, and for those curious on video, yeah, here's the panorama I just took. And uh, now it does zoom in a bit, Chilla. Mm -hmm. So you can go up and down a little bit. Okay. Like this. Uh, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's the mess over to my right. And there's a couple monitors and there's Chilla across the way. So yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's just the that's just the uh, Apple iPhone panorama, and you're good to go. So, there's a little something for you, Chilla. I don't know anything else. Three sixty, you want to touch on before you tell me your awesome thing of the week? Um, anything new out of your uh, Gear three sixty uh, uh, discoveries? Oculus is going to revamp, and I don't think I put the I don't think I put it in the show notes. Oculus is actually taking their Samsung apps. Because obviously you have a you have an Oculus store right on a Samsung device that then auto launches when you put the phone into the, the headset. Yeah. Oculus is actually porting the PC UI over to the phone UI. So it's gonna be the consistent user experience across both devices, which I thought was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Um since I would think the PC could do more and have more power, but they do want that consistent experience. So they're, they're actually porting the new PC user interface over to the Samsung device. The one question that some people have is Samsung has a kind of friends interface where you can see other people that have the device and, and whatnot and, and, and put them and contact them through the, through the Oculus piece. Um, that is missing from some of the demos that were spotted online. Um, but that's just question of, is that going to be added upon release? And it's just not in the demo mm -hmm. um, or from what, what is leaked online. But I thought that was pretty cool. It feels like you're going to be do going to be able to do a lot with those Samsung. Headsets. I feel like you're going to be able to do a lot with the headset. You're going to be able to do. And what I, more importantly, I feel like you're going to be able to do a lot even without the headset. Mm. So if you want to create content, if you're a content creator, right? And this is something I I definitely had a conversation di di directly with Samsung about. It. I'm like, I'm not developing video games, right? Right. Uh, I'm interested in business application for this, and and they were they were very understanding about that. And it seems like everybody is all the all the content sites like your Twitters, your Facebooks, everybody seems to be a hundred percent on board with that. Mm -hmm. And they're really getting out there to support, to support the formats. Right. The other thing I see is in the players, the players have, cause they can't, they can't, it seems like they can't always figure out what format the it's getting played back in. Mm -hmm. So I've also noticed in like the milk VR video player, there's a format button that you can just toggle between formats so you could kind of select what's formats appropriate for how your vr video was recorded which i thought was pretty cool hmm. but i guess it's my turn for my awesome it is your turn it is your week. turn and that's why we've been so deep this this is the new exciting thing it's not just vr it's not just video games it is like like something like this this is very accessible we've been talking about splash Mm -hmm. You know, you can um, I was I was chatting with somebody today and says, hey, you know, like, that's interesting. Like people people are, you know, even taking those pictures and doing like street view indoor stuff. I mean, that's something we've been doing for 15 years, actually. And now it's just become a little more accessible. Right. It's mm -hmm. been, you know, uh, uh, boiled down to this little device that you can take anywhere and, and, and do something with and be a little more nondescript, you know, in, in, in that. Because we used to have a big rig we'd have to do uh, with a camera and then we'd stitch that together in some software and hope it worked right. And uh, and, and it's coming around. So. All right. But uh, you uh, you want to tell me about uh, uh, how your banking is changing, which is kind of <laughs> ironic, actually, given your intro. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought this was, and this was announced. I saw this all over a lot of the the media sites um, yesterday. Bank of America 
has started to allow their users on, and this is a slow rollout, they're, you're actually going to be able to leverage your Apple Pay enabled device. And it sounds like this is rolling out to not just it, Apple devices. It sounds like this will be anyone with a, a digital wallet that can kind of use the pay wave as well. Um, but you'll be able to to wave your wallet or watch in front of their ATM, type in your pin and have access to your account which I, I personally think this is awesome. This is one more thing that allows you to kind of get rid of that the wallet. I yeah. mean, my wallet is getting thinner and thinner. I still do sometimes carry a couple cards because if the if the place I'm going doesn't accept the, the pay wave or whatnot um, or Apple Pay, then I'm kind of stuck. You see, that's the thing. I shop small, Chilla. And nobody small has Apple Pay. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, it, it very like 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 seriously like I will spend a day in Banksville or I'm sorry in Beachview in Allentown and that's not you know a thing. Um, you know I actually got confused yesterday because I was we were um, um going around we we're looking to get passport photos and we went down the Rite Aid and they don't actually take them down there and I went over to CVS and I went to check out. And I tried to pull up my Apple Pay because I saw on the door, I know going into one of them, Apple Pay and Android Pay. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the lady's like, oh, yeah, we had it for like a day. And we, I was like, that's right. That was CVS. And that had that problem. And I saw this on another one. I just went to two places at the same time and got confused. But Walgreens. I, Wa- Walgreens takes them. takes them now. Walgreens is the one that started taking them again or something, right? I think they took them from day one and have been. Oh, Walgreens, okay. McDonald's. You go, Walgreens. Yeah, there were a bunch of day one people. I think Walgreens and McDonald's were at the McDonald's. Top of the list. I'm always going through the drive through. And sometimes when I use my PayPal card, um, randomly, they'll decide, hey, you need to enter a PIN. I use the same card. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I think it's somebody on the other end, right? And they'll like grab this device, the 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 keypad on the giant stick and try to hand it out to me and stuff. And I'm like, if that's what they gotta do for me to do Apple Pay, I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it just it doesn't make sense at that point. It's like I'll hand you a card instead of you handing me this giant thing so I can use my phone. You know, um, but I got to use it a couple of times, and and it's pretty nice. And now I'm looking for those places. Those places, you know. Now I'm keeping an eye out for those places and trying to take note and like oh, I'll use this thing. That's fine. Well, so, so I got a recently got a chip in my card, so mm-hmm. I have to chip and pay. It's a pain in your ass, isn't it? Yeah. So. If I can use Apple Pay anywhere, now it's like the poor, the <laughs> poor, poor coffee shop at the top of the hill. They got the, they have Square, mm-hmm. and they got the new Square thing, and they had to pay for the new Square thing with the chip, right? They and it doesn't work half the time, and you need to charge it separately. And none of the employees, so she was, she was complaining, she's like, no, nobody else remembers to charge this thing, and then it doesn't work half the time. Then I have to use the other one anyways. Why did we pay for this thing? It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so so I think what it is though is if you're if you have the ability to use if you give your employee or you give your customers the the option of using chip and pin mm-hmm. then you are not it's liability liable yeah it's it, it's a liability we we can you completely just keep using credit cards mm-hmm. we don't do enough that we're concerned about it uh for for our business that for our, for our booth business our DVD booth business and um and uh it, it's uh so that's fine as far as us go, but, but but something like this, a small business like that, that does do a good good bit. Yeah, they mm-hmm. have to be concerned with it, and unfortunately, they have to pay more in order to not have to. But that's mm-hmm. that's kind of the price of doing business, isn't it? So now I'm looking at all. I'm looking for anywhere that accepts these types of things. If I can get out of using my chip and pen. Yep. Especially Target with that horrible grinding sound whenever it says to do it. No matter, even if you're doing something right, you have a horrible sound that happens from that device. Well, the, the girl so at CVS, horrible. the girl at CVS yesterday, she's like, yeah, the, it, for some weird reason today, the, the chip and pen. Oh yeah. She told me not to, too. Is failing. Yeah. So she's like, you're going to have to let it, it's going to fail twice and then it'll work on the third try. <laughs> and this is what we're used to. And this is what we're used to now. This is this is them deploying the most common consumer thing that you could. And It works everywhere else other than in the United States. <laughs> yeah, we can't figure this out. Canada's had this for like five years, I think. And, and we, we can't figure it out. The UK's had it for at least 10. Jeez. Jeez, guys, come on. Well, you know what? You know what America, you, you know what America does? You know what's so American? And nobody else does it better. Pizza. Pizza. 
pizza. Slice on Broadway, our good friends. Uh, did, did you get some? I minute. forgot to get I some. I forgot to get some. Go, go, go get some. Like, <laughs> Slice on Broadway, our good friends supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, and, of course, now at Hey, on Sea Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, check them out, slates on Broadway.com. Our good buddies over there making some awesome, awesome pizza and uh, supplying the in studio co hosts and guests here on Tuesday night podcast day for a good while now. They're here in Beachview on what used to be tracks. Actually, there are tracks in front of their building now. They cemented at least one side of them. Uh, so it's on its way. Progress! <laughs> yes. And also, uh, Main, Main Street, I almost said Main Event. Mean Street down on Carnegie, PA, as well as over, like I said, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Go check it out. I need to go have lunch with somebody. Actually, I'm having lunch with Lunchbox uh, coming up here on, on Thursday. I think we, uh, I want to see if he's up for some slice. We'll go down there, have a uh, podcast hangout. And uh, get get some of our slice on good stuff. Go check them out. Slice on Broadway.com. PGH underscore slice on Twitter and slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. Let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast and say hi. Tell them they're awesome pizza. Chilla, 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 chilla. Vi- virtual reality. All the virtual realities. So many things. There's headsets floating around here. There's like it's it's everywhere. It's, it's yeah, because it's floating around here, that means everybody's got them now, right? You, you no, can't get right? away from it. You can't get away from it. It's just, it's just, it's just everywhere. Uh, but, but of course, and it was definitely everywhere at E3. It was kind of the exciting thing at E3. I was really late on following E3 this year. So, so that little bit, I need to, I still need to take that. Like, I'm going to dive in on everything. Yeah, I'll find time to do that. Um, so, uh, so. Uh, it, one thing I noticed, so PlayStation VR, of course, if you get the opportunity, if you're here in Pittsburgh, uh, look up the list. They're going to do PlayStation virtual reality demos in Best Buys and GameStops. Century 3 and the one down in Bethel Park is going to have them uh, from ones I was looking at. They look like they're and, and it's specific times and dates. And looks like this Saturday, it's actually going to be at those two locations. Uh, so look that up. See if it's in your area. See when it's in your area if you want to try this out. I think... I'm going to see what's going on maybe around Sorgatron Media Coffee and maybe we'll head out. We should do a field trip. <laughs> you know, hang out and check it out. Uh, and of course, the big thing that surprised me, and we've been talking about how these uh, specialized experiences, the stuff we've seen with the HTC Vive um, at the, at the six-year anniversary party and, uh, and, 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 and all those kinds of things, I was surprised that PlayStation VR said, hey, you get VR and you get VR and you get VR with all their games coming out. New Resident Evil, Fallout 4 is going to get VR attached to it. And the first thing I remember hearing about VR when it, when Oculus was becoming a thing that everybody's excited about was how, hey, we completely put Team, Team Fortress 2 in, uh, in Oculus Rift. This is a bad idea, <laughs> right? I mean, you heard that too, right? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and I, I'm glad to see that somebody over at some knowledgeable... Uh, the, uh, a website and gadget in this in this case uh, uh, wrote up an article about uh, how uh, E3 was secretly terrible for virtual reality, <laughs> and, and I think that's the case because it's going. I'm my worry is that's not going to be a great experience. Like the great experience is something that's fine tuned for the virtual reality experience on high end hardware. That's basically been the best thing. We've done the cardboard. We've done the high-end stuff. We kind of can see the difference at this point. But the mass public that goes to Best Buys and check these things out, or maybe have everybody everybody will have a friend that, that has way too much money and picks this thing up, even though it's not going to be nearly as much as for what it's going to cost from these other other setups. Um it's uh, you know in in their they're saying platform wars, simulator sickness, and exclusivity deals will threaten to tear VR apart as far as this goes. And of course, there's there's word that you know Xbox is going to support with their newer uh, hardware uh, something like the Oculus Rift or you know VR headsets in general. Again, not the same as a fifteen hundred dollar PC, uh, but still, it's going to be something, right? Um, I don't know, Chilla. You, you've been keeping an eye out for this as well. Are you worried about the state of this, or is this something that's just going to hash it out and and maybe the best experiences will win? So, so PlayStation has never done extremely well 
with accessory peripheral hardware. What? Like the Move and the iToy? You got that, right? You got the iToy, right? <laughs> yeah, no. You got the PlayStation hard drive so you can play Final Fantasy XI online, right? See, no. No? I didn't even get a PlayStation, so... How about that DualShock controller? The... You got the DualShock controller. That I did. know people that do have the do. That is one thing that I have seen, actually, people purchase. Not that many people. So... Will people shy away from it? Will people come to it because it's VR? Um, if they if they can execute it correctly, I think it's going to be a hard sell for people and parents alike to be able to buy this unless they can see it being used. I don't think they want another. I or, there was a game. There were some games that came out for PlayStation that had like a board that connected with. The, oh, I, th- I don't know oh, if it oh, used you, the you, eye you, you to monitor about the, the book? board. You talking about the book with the Harry Potter thing? That's what Chachi, yeah. Chachi pointed out uh, this to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. Guess what never came out? What? That thing. That book. Okay. That, the, the magic Harry Potter book that we were all going to play with and have dragons shoot out from a book on TV. Never came out. Never came out. Never came out. It was a but cool... didn't they have like a board game that was kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons type? I think that was one of the card ideas. Card game or board game? That was one of the ideas for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that so... And it's probably because they figured out it, it was expensive to make and no one was going to buy it. You so. know what? In the long run, that was all R&D for what we have now. I mean, look at the VR. It's actually using an eye, it's going to use an eye toy in the PlayStation Move. We've recycled technology at this point, you know? Mm-hmm. I, we didn't have to develop a new controller like the Vi- HTC Vive did. It's like, well, uh, that works pretty well. Now let's just put a thing on your head. Which, to that point, I think they do have an advantage because they've been doing that for several years and now they're just talking to a different display mm-hmm. that that also has tracking in it so all right we're we're we're, we're, we're going a, a good direction there but still i am worried about is this hardware heavy enough to do it you know what are we going to get out of this is it going to work out well I, I think if your phones can push decent video and basic games and your pc can push Decent games. I don't see why they can't adapt the PlayStation, Xbox, whatever to, to do this. But I think to your point, it's more about the execution of the content. If you try to start going back through your catalog and figuring out how you can adapt it to VR, it's going to be pretty darn lame. Mm. The only the only way I could see them even remotely upselling the concept of old game is that I don't know if you've ever watched um, Netflix or anything like that on a VR headset. It actually kind of puts you in a movie theater. Mm-hmm. So H- you, Hulu you, just got announced to do something similar. You, you feel like you have the goggles on and you're sitting there, but you feel like you're sitting on a couch or on a movie theater and the screen actually mm-hmm. stays, the, the screen doesn't follow you. So if you move your head to the right, you move your head away from the screen, and the screen's here. And, and apparently can... away from the microphone. And, oh, sorry, and apparently <laughs> okay. away from the microphone. So so that's, if they did that, and it was like a, we don't have enough TVs to, enough big TVs for the kids to play, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this is going to be like a extra TV in the house, I could s- potentially kids, see it. Kids, go to the... your VR pods and behave. <laughs> But I, and but I mean it would probably be cheaper than multiple forty three inch screens. I just see I just see like like they just like closets where um closets where where just like there's like the uh, BattleTech Battle Pods that used to have a Dave and Buster's <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's what you go and sit in and then do your VR thing or whatever. Which actually also reminds me that's kind of like the pods that they have at Surrogates that Bruce Willems movie and uh, you know it all kind of comes together. Doesn't yeah, we're it? all we're all going in that direction. Reminder: I ha- need to read uh, Ready Player One. Yes, before the movie comes out. Got it in Loot Crate. Just need to watch. Yeah, because I have time for things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> um, I don't know. It's It'll be curious. It'll be curious to see. All right, let's get some other things. Let's get some other technology. Uh, I, everybody was talking about this. You, you brought this up before the show. So I want to touch on something more down homey and, and, you know, 2D desktop-y. Um, so, so tell me what Windows 10 is doing. And they, they were interested in this in the chat room as well. So, is it the re the refresh that we were talking about, or is it the um, uh, the Android notifications? Oh, oh, the refresh. Do the, do the refresh, and then and then ask, then tell me about Android notifications because I'm curious about that. Okay. Sorry, I forgot there were two stories in here. Oh, no problem. Um, 
and now I can't close the ad. Oh um, no! That's okay. So I'm, I'm good. Oh, what so website in, are in, we in never Windows, using again? Windows 10 in Windows 10 um, Anniversary Edition, which I think will be out in towards the fall. Which is, by the way, how we're going to now name the <laughs> like like we're pretty sure Windows 10 is the last Windows number, right? I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Something's talking over there. Is that your ad again? Yeah, that's the darn <laughs> stupid. Uh, what was it? Uprox has been really annoying me lately with with some autoplay mute stuff. Mute tab. So mute tab. Soon in the next version of Mac OS, I'll be able to say Siri, comma, mute tab. <laughs> um, no, but anyway, so Windows in the anniversary edition. One one of the things they're gonna they're 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 saying that they're gonna let you do is they're going to allow you to factory reset your c- computer. And it's going to re, pretty much wipe the hard drive and reinstall Windows. More importantly than the way the manufacturers want them to do this, what it's going to actually do is it's going to do a f- non-vendor-based factory restore. It's going to do a Microsoft factory restore, which is going to wipe the hard drive, reinstall Windows, and then not install any of the bloatware. So my only concern with this <clears throat> is what about your drivers? So hi Paul Thorot, by the way. <laughs> this is the article that uh, uh Cross shared in the chat room with, about this. With the way Windows is continuing to update and update the driver packs, mm-hmm. I would think so, that what's gonna happen is you would get at, at minimum enough drivers to get you back on the internet. So it's a little and then better. They, would, they than, would actually come through Windows Update, which okay. means they would be certified. So it's a little better when I would drop like Windows XP on a system yeah. and, and cross my fingers. And uh, yeah, and then and then after it installed, then you have to update to Service Pack three and then yeah. grab all your drive. Yeah, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be much more much more efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> update to Service Pack three so that I have an Explorer, uh, uh, Windows Internet Explorer that can bring down any other browser because none of the sites work. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. There were like key features missing for connecting the internet after a certain point, if you rolled back to the original Windows XP disk. Mm-hmm. Like, it, 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 it was rough. And I'm staring at three Windows XP machines right now. So that's how we roll. Anyways, um, no, I, I think that's great. I, I, so that, that's it's nice to have the option. And, hey, Microsoft can do that. And let's be honest, how many people will do that? This is the thing where, oh, mom, you got a, a Windows 10 computer. Cool. Hey, um, can I borrow that for an evening and fix it for you? It's not <laughs> broken. I just bought it. Just trust me. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things to uninstall. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask you, how many times has McAfee uh, anti-spyware popped up as you've loaded this computer? And that's the, that's the thing, too. In Windows, I think it was 8 and 10 now, Defender's free. Yeah. So... The, the pop-ups for your 30-day evaluation and purchasing something else is pretty much uninstall it and let Defender take Redundant. back over. It's un- unneeded yeah. at this point. Microsoft is pretty much taking care of itself. Uh, so, cool. That's good. And then, and then, good. And then on top of that, if you're after, after you're done with your reinstall and getting rid of all your bloatware, um, load up Cortana on, well, enable Cortana on Windows and then download and install Cortana on your Android app. And your Android device will then sync all of your notifications and do kind of pass through type stuff from Windows to Android through Cortana. So when you get a text message on your Android based device, it will actually come up on your computer and you can sit there and tap type, type, type to reply. What? Um, Any notifications that you get, um, whether it be from WhatsApp or Facebook or or um, will actually come up on your on your device as well um and and i from what i hear you can actually say send a text message to so and so and it's actually going to pump back out through the android device that being said one of the things that if if you do anything other than plug the samsung device into the vr headset Mm -hmm. download samsung side sync um it does the same thing on steroids, but it also allows you to bring up the entire phone on your computer and use it right there in a window. 
Um, definitely cool. I'm thinking Microsoft's going to definitely go in that route. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like an inverted Chromecast. It, it, um, but well, 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 scaling back to your 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 messages with from Android, like that feels like the notification crossover that you have between iPhones and Macs, and then having so, iMessage on both devices. Yeah, like, like that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's that's great. Um, um that because that was. Uh, you know, well, now we have a crossover problem because I, I, a couple weeks ago, I was explaining something that I could do on the Mac, and Missy sitting there with their uh, uh, Windows 10 computer, and it's like I, I can't, I can't do that. And she, but she's got again iPhone, the Windows. Mm-hmm. Where can we make that connection? Have that sync happen, right? Uh, but it's nice to see that that's opening up to this, and who knows? Maybe, maybe as we're seeing things open up for iPhone, maybe there will be opportunities in the future for um, something like this, right? So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's uh, touch on a couple other interesting things from the week. I was very excited uh, to hear uh, Spiro. And of course, Spiro, we know from the BB-8 toy that everybody just adores. By the way, I I don't know how much Spiro has been doing in in the public uh, consciousness, but um, putting out a BB-8 to say, hey, here we have a, a robot that can do this was the perfect introduction to everything else they can do. So they have a new rolling rolling uh, robot that can uh, swim, paint, and teach kids to code. And it's a fun little thing. And it looks like it, it's kind of like um, kind of a Lego Mindstorms kind of situation because in the video that I will hopefully load here in a moment on The Verge, uh, they were showing that you know, the, 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 the Sphero can kind of attach and, and like there were these little kind of wagon uh, things. And there's a gaggle of Spheros rolling around, I, I think, as a, a, a uh, solar system here oh, in this that's room. Cool. That is awesome. Yeah, there's one in the middle of the sun, like a bigger ball or something. And they're just kind of circling around. Uh, but no, another mechanism they teach kids to code. I, I'm open for anything like that, that 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 gets STEM, you know, going. Um, but no, that, that's that's cool. Uh, so so Sphero, not just for cute robot beep beeps anymore. The watch the watch Force Awakens with you. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure this one will too. It just doesn't have a face. So robots, they're here. Please don't kill us. Um, Chilla, anything? Anything else you want to touch on here? Um, I actually put a link up in the the apps. Have you heard of Slinger? No, that sounds dirty. So Slinger is Snapchat's new BFF. I, I guess there's a person and and you're going to I'm going to have to apologize because I don't know. I'm not the the grandiose Snapchat person, but it's okay, I'll catch you up. Chris Carmichael, who's a major Snapchatter, um, has one point over one point three million Snapchat followers. Mm-hmm. Um he created this app because he felt like he wanted somewhere that you could actually curate the Snapchat stories in, oh. in its entirety. Okay. And it's actually meant for content that's filmed vertically. Okay. Um, so he generated Slinger. So you can actually take your entire Snapchat story and upload it to Slinger. And it kind of has a um, Instagram type interface from from what I'm under from what I'm seeing and, and hearing and whatnot. Um, thought it was a very cool concept and felt like it was also a way that you could quickly start to figure out if you're a noob like me, um, who you may want to start trying to follow additionally on Snapchat. I love it because yeah, curation is horrible on here. You've seen, I mean, uh, there was an interesting, somebody was uh, uh, talking about how the Post Gazette's and so many others are doing this. Their Twitter icon is their Snapchat mm-hmm. and because that's the only way to get big on a platform is to use your other platform to get people <laughs> over to that platform, which seems in this day and age, so heavy handed, but it also means people aren't just floating in and, 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 and doing, you know, uh, how many likes do I get on Instagram? Get a hundred followers and you know, at me and other things and everything like that. We don't have that, which mm-hmm. is kind of nice and siloed. Although their discovery icons are getting very huge and annoying the crap out of me lately. I want to point that out for Snapchat. Um, no, that's great. If you notice what I've been doing with Snapchat, I'm taking my Snapchat story 
stories and I'm throwing on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, guys, this is what my day was like, you know, and and kind of like taking that as a video blog, you know, kind of thing. Because once again, like like Snapchat is kind of my scratch pad and I'm throwing stuff at it. Right. And it's like, well, I kind of like how that looked. And I threw it in another uh, application called uh this because people want to know what i'm using over there in shot i n shot on uh, on iphone which has a bunch of horrible horrible ads and i don't have to click the thing and and say and and say yeah take your logo off this time no i don't want to pay 2.99 because it never stops letting me take the logo off um it's very interesting that way but it works and it adds a little fuzzy so it's a square video and and fits you know you know a little better on on certain screens um I like this. I like this because I'm already taking those and putting them somewhere like that Mm -hmm. Um, to take them and and put them over here. Uh, I'm downloading it now, by the way, and I will hopefully have more information for you as as I hopefully. So so definitely keep me posting what you think about it just because I'm I'm actually probably going to run over there and start to use that to try to figure out additional people to follow and think, get, yeah. also get additional ideas for how I could potentially use Snapchat. I'm kind of stuck in an office all day. So that's the interesting thing. So what can you do for content? Right. Yeah. That's a good question. That was actually a question that was over on a Gary V. I'm in office all day. What I do is like you make good content. And you figure it out. That's what mm-hmm. you do. Right. You like, OK, this is what I have. What can I do? I mean, we're talking about, you know, a world where, I, you know, friend of pod camp. I just seen what did she do when she was stuck? I'm in an airport alone all night because my layover is delayed and I'm here for six hours. She took an empty airport and made something out of it, right? Mm-hmm. You can do something with your office. Chachi is in an office all day, and he was starting to, to do toystergrams of all the toys that he had at his desk, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you create. You create. You figure, you figure out how to create, and that's a good mind exercise for you. We did a lot of that kind of stuff when I was stuck in an office, actually. So, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think that's perfect, man. I think it's a good introduction, and hopefully this app um, does as advertised and, and, and you know kind of stretches that out a little bit and gets Chilla into the Snapchat because we don't want to get left behind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready for the weird story of the week? Wife of the show, Missy, actually shared this as well, uh, but uh, it, it, it popped up a lot of places for me this past week, and I'm trying... <laughs> So LG has a new TV, and this is over at Circuit Breaker, the gadget blog for TheVerge.com, uh, originally had this. And uh, LG's uh, new TV repels mosquitoes, allowing you to sit in front of your TV forever. So, yeah. <laughs> How many people have mosquito problems listen, inside man, the Listen, man, listen, man, you know, when you live in the south, in the southern states where you have your window open all the time and the screen and you don't have the central air and this mosquitoes just find their way into your house big ones too big nasty ones by the way um i got one of those the other day and uh <laughs> i look how i like just look how chill this family <laughs> is in this picture <laughs> they comment on without a single uh, mosquito bite between them um but anyways <laughs> um the, the LG is also uh, um, adding this uh, uh, same uh, uh, technology to air conditioners and washing machines, which generate, which one are, again, entry points um, for mosquitoes to come in your house because both have an exhaust, right? Not Well, I guess not washing machines, more dryers, right? Mm-hmm. But still, that would be wet, so it would attract them. But Or maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe your washing machine's in the shack. You don't want to get bit out there. Um, doesn't really even say what the technology is. I think it's just, just inter, um, I think it's just, just like a, a tone or something, you know, that it, that it kind of puts out there from the looks of things. So, um, so there you go. LG mosquito away technology, they're calling it. And, um, and you're good to go. So thank you for sharing that. Um, by the way, Krause says that the Android uh, to Windows Sync works great. He's been experimenting with that as well. Chilla. Yeah, but Cor- Cortana boogered up his camera, I think. What? Yeah, he had all kinds of problems, and it ended up being Cortana. It was it was seemed to be wreaking some havoc on his on his device. I don't know oh, if it's wow. been if she's had a, had a little tune up under the hood 
to, to fix some issues, but I think he was having some. It usually sounds dirty when you say a lady needs a tune up under the hood, but she needs some Cortana. code rewritten. <laughs> Siri, Siri, you need a tune up. Siri, Siri has new applications and and uh, connections and hooks under the hood that we'll be experiencing soon. Yeah, you could go a lot. Like Cortana actually sounds like more identified. We have a physical form when we hear Cortana. If you've ever played Halo in your mm-hmm. head, and an actress, I think to go along with that as well. So I don't. Anyways, we're going down a weird rat hole. Chilla, <laughs> let's stop before we get in trouble. Um, <laughs> chillatech.net. What's going on over at Chillatech? That's Anything? uh, last actually, I'm now gonna post uh, how to get your 360 photos up on Facebook because I just figured it out on the trusty Samsung device. So nice, I will be posting some, some additional 360 photos on there. Anyone who has some interesting things on ways to display video, please let me know because I'm having sh- still having a problem with that. You should be able to embed those. Into a, a web page from Facebook? Yes. The video you should be. The video I can embed, but I want to be able to host it on my own. That's where I, I'm running I know. This from. is this is what we yeah. were talking about before. What, Pal- Palladium, wasn't it? Yeah. Palladium. Panel. Pal- panel. Pal- 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 Palladium. Something like that. Something like Panel-um. that. Panelum. It's over at Chilatech.net. He's using that for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm using that for the photos, and it's working yeah. great, but I'd like something where I could self-host my video, um, which yeah. I've... I can't seem to find YouTube does a good job of it. Facebook does a decent job of it. They all do decent jobs. If you want them to host your content and then embed it somewhere else, right. not right. a problem. Depending on what you're at enterprise yeah. level, you want it in house. Yeah. Talk to Microsoft. Be like, what's up, Microsoft? You doing this yet? Yeah. <laughs> Next version of SharePoint. Next I version of SharePoint <laughs> plus 360. <gasps> Share- SharePoint 360. SharePoint 360. Come on, the, Microsoft. We're writing this stuff for you. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> And, of course, Sogatron.com is where my blog is. I talk about technology once a week there. And you can sign up for the newsletter there or over at SogatronMedia.com as well and get updates about things going on and events happening. Uh, Big events um, uh, right up the road at the Carnegie Library. Actually, if you walk out my front door and look left, you'll probably see the lights for Carnegie Library (laughs) down down my road. Uh, But not really attached to my road. Uh, I'll be there talking about video for the web. I probably listed too many uh, technologies because I say that we're going to talk about Facebook Live, Snapchat, uh, Periscope, and Twitter video, you know, things like that. Uh, basically, I, I, I'm not going to dive into how you make videos. I'm pretty much going to give tips of this. these are things you need to consider putting videos on Facebook to get people's attention. This is what you need to consider when you're looking for stuff for Snapchat that I figured out so far. Uh, this is the kind of stuff maybe you should Periscope and Facebook Live for like kind of more looking at use this sort of video because not just like let's make a video and do a thing guys and it'll be great no it doesn't work that way anymore trust us we put two hour videos on Facebook every week and they don't always do too great um, there's other methods for you to use um, but, but, but again our audience catches us so it's good and you guys have been checking us out live as well we're uh, awesomecast.net and uh, uh, streaming of course on Facebook and everywhere else um also sorgatron media coffee is this saturday at work hard pittsburgh 1 p.m i'll even say the other thing uh uh, the the uh, boot camp go find out more information on that at podcamppittsburgh.com podcamp pittsburgh uh facebook page um that's uh i think it's going to be 6 p.m at carnegie library beachview if you want to come down join that we will also be uh, expecting to facebook live that if you can't make it down or want to check it out later if all works out it should be there as well and Sorgatron Media Coffee is at 1 p.m. Saturday at Workhart Pittsburgh up in the Allentown neighborhood up there in Warrington, about a hill over from where we're at right now. I encourage you to check that out. Again, look at that on our Facebook page for Sorgatron Media. All these events uh, you can also find on meetup.com. A lot of great feedback going into uh, a couple of these events. And, of course, an evening with PodCamp next week. we got a great lineup of folks, including our friend of the show, Kim Lyons, moderating a panel on social media and politics. Politics. I'm nowhere near this panel. Just want to point out. Just letting the experts do this, and we'll see what fireworks we light. Is any real quick on on events up and coming? And I'm just trying. If, if anyone's going to the replay of FX, did you hear about this? Yes, I'm aware of that. Uh, our Katie and Scarehouse will be there. Okay, so if anyone's going to that, let me know. I'm actually, I'd like to go and take some 360 video and photos. Mm-hmm. So I'll definitely, hopefully, be there throughout the weekend. Um, Is that this weekend? No, it's not till the end of July. 
Oh, that's right. Okay. So it's about a, a little over a month away, but it's always nice to try to plan. Well, when you have a kid, you have to plan things. So. Yep. yep. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, awesomecast.net. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Thank you to our awesome chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.